Hey guys, it's Max, and we're back with Battle Code 2016. In this episode, we're going to leverage that advantage that we had from electing a leader by telling the entire squad to move as a whole. Here's a screenshot from one of the matches we played where our robots were sort of getting lost and going their own separate ways. Let's instead try to make them work as a team based on this leader. So here's our leader, Archon Zero, and he's going to tell everybody where to go. For a location, let's have them all move to, say, four tiles ahead of the Archon. So this is the location where we want all of our robots to go. I like the idea that our robots are trying to get ahead of the Archon because it means that they'll be protecting him, at least in theory. This is probably the most amount of code that I've written in a single video, and so it'll take a lot of takes, and I'll make a lot of mistakes. Let's get to it. So here's the place where the Archons are elected. Elections and movement in general are going to be moved to their own method that I'm going to call signaling. Signaling will be different depending on whether our robot is an Archon or not. Supposing we are an Archon, let's check that it is round zero to see whether elections are taking place. Instead of setting our indicator string, let's set our own identity. ID will start at zero, and it'll change depending on the number of messages received. We'll add a throws declaration so that we can get rid of that error. OK. If the round number is not 0, then we have to follow instructions as an Archon. These are the other Archons who are not the leader. If ID is, not, is, is equal to 0, then we'll do one thing, and otherwise, we'll have to follow the instructions of the leader. OK. Next, if our robot type is not an Archon, then we always follow instructions. We'll have to create these next two methods. follow instructions, and send instructions. Probably it makes most sense for us to send the instructions first. So let's do that. Note that we're only sending the instructions if we're an Archon, and the round number is not zero, and our ID is zero, meaning that we are the leader. So let's go ahead and send those instructions. rc.broadcast message signal. The first integer will be rc.getTeam.ordinal. We don't want to get these two teams confused. The next integer we'll send is rc. No, we'll send moving direction. Ordinal. So now we're sending the direction and our team. Lastly, we'll set the broadcast radius to some big number. We use a throws declaration. OK, now let's follow those instructions. This is a little more complicated because we have to look through the available messages in the queue to find the one that is from our team, and then we have to decode it to get to that position. Recall, we're looking for this position, but the message only contains the location and the direction. So we need to add to the location about four units worth of the direction in the message signal. So first, let's isolate the message that has the team that we're looking for. Because if our two robot teams get near each other, the, method, the messages are going to uh, conflict with one another. First, we'll get a list of messages. This is, looks exactly the same as above. So we're going to get the incoming messages. If incoming messages dot length is zero, then you can really do nothing. All right, so we're just handling that case. 
Maybe the Archons have been destroyed, maybe they're out of range. We don't want to throw an exception later. Now we're going to do for int message index equals zero. Message index is less than incoming messages dot length. Message index incrementing. Here's another way to write a for loop. And we're going to loop through each message and look for the right one. We'll say, we'll define a message called current message. And the current message is going to be equal to incoming messages at message index. So we're just looping through each one and looking for the one that's on our team. That means if rc.getTeam.ordinal is equal to current message dot uh, get message at location zero. That is to say, the first integer in the message. So if the first integer of the message matches our team ordinal, then leave the loop, because that means that that message is the correct message. OK, now we're going to use that information. But first, check that we did receive a good one. If current message is null, then return. So we're not going to execute any more in this function if it didn't find a message from our leader. If it did find a message from our leader, we need to decode that message. Oh, this is a lot of work, huh? So we're decoding it. The location of our archon is current message dot get location. Remember that each message carries with it the location of the sending robot. The uh, the direction that we want to move in is current message dot get message at index one because we sent the moving direction dot ordinal. But we have to convert that ordinal into a direction. So we'll set direction dot values indexed at that ordinal and that gets us back into a direction now the direction that we want to go is toward this goal so let me show you again this diagram that's the goal and maybe we are this robot here so we need to go in the direction from our location to the goal location okay goal location is equal to it was the archon location and we add in that direction times four tiles so finally we set the moving direction and that's from our location to the goal location. All right, geez, that was a lot of stuff. Oh. All right, let's try it and see if we're receiving the right messages and we're going to the goal location. Uh, one last thing I'd like to do is change patient from a Boolean. Let's change it to an integer. It's like a, an amount of patience. And if we're continuing to move in some direction, then patient equals patient. It, it's going to be decremented, or it's going to be incremented by 10 up to a maximum of 100 for each move. Or maybe we'll increment it by 1 to a maximum of 30 or something like that. Uh, math.min gives it a maximum of 30. So as long as we're moving, we become more patient. Um, and otherwise, if we're not moving, then we lose patience. 
at a rate of, I don't know, maybe five per turn. That way we can go between being patient and impatient. All right, let's see if it works. Oh, I hope so. That was a lot. If it's working, then we should see that our robots together are going ahead of our Archon that is the leader. One hiccup to this is that the Archon's not really waiting for them to, keep, to catch up. But nevertheless, we're going to hope and we're going to try it. Okay, again, we're on Lecture Player 2 on Get to Work. When the client opens, I'm going to pause for a moment to let my rendering software catch up. Okay, pausing. All right, now let's step forward just a little. Oh, look! Robots are, in general, I think, sticking together a little bit better. Let's go back. Well, I think it worked. In the next episode, we'll change a few things around and uh, check that it worked.